Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time to go through the assembly of this DIY build your own wash water reclamation system for hopefully less than $500. Tonight, uh, when I go and cut all this footage together, I'm gonna go through and uh, price out all the parts and we'll at the end of the video, we'll have a little price breakdown so we can see what it actually came in at. But basically I've already got this thing sort of partially assembled just to save time for the video. I'm not gonna bother you know, taping up all the fittings and all that on video because I want to keep this video manageable because y'all know I like to fucking talk a lot and uh, we'll just blab and blab and blab forever and the video will be fucking two hours long before I know it. So anyways, in that spirit, let's show you what's going on here. So uh, I've already cut the holes in the lid. Did this with a hole saw. We got these one inch bulkhead fittings here and here. We got the two inch bulkhead fitting here in here now these holes you got to cut are actually a three inch hole because the outside diameter is <coughs> of course bigger than the two inch inside diameter for this male pipe thread here that's these are going to screw into these uh two inch pvc elbows with two inch hose barbs you can get get this stuff at home depot but the outside diameter is exactly three inches so a three inch hole saw these ones i believe are two and a quarter but you know these bulkhead fittings they're all different when you get them from different manufacturers so if you buy like the uh, what are these? The, uh, I can't remember the name, brands. Uh, Banjo. <clears throat> yeah, Banjo, I believe is the one that makes these ones. These are sort of like standard uh, moldings and castings, and then they cut the thread into these things. But they're, these ones are three inch outside diameter, and these ones are, I believe, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter or two and a half. I think it's two and a quarter, but uh, yeah. Um, and then we got basically uh, some PVC closes. These are just two inch pipe thread by three inch length nipples or a close. A close just means it has male pipe thread on both ends, screwed into a female elbow. that has got female pipe thread here, female pipe thread here, and then a male threaded two inch hose barb. Two of those, one for the in, one for the out. And then we got our electrical cord pass through fitting. And this is uh, of course one inch here. And then we have a one inch bushing that reduces down to a half inch, which takes this little electrical strain relief. And the way these things work is this little uh, nylon grommet grows in there. It gets compressed when you screw it down. And then these little teeth, as it gets screwed down, go into a bevel or a taper and it causes them to squish the cord and grab it. So you have a little suspension relief. I think I call them strain relief electrical coat fittings. And they also work to kind of seal it up and make it airtight. And then we also have our discharge fitting. So this is going to, this bulkhead fitting is going to get installed, pass up through that hole. And then this will be our garden hose out that the sump pump will pump out through. And then we got a, we just built a quick disconnect uh, one-way check valve or backflow preventer. And this could just screw on the end of your garden hose here, right there. And then that water hose fitting will screw onto that water hose fitting. And then you have a check valve you could take in or out of the system, but this will prevent air from being sucked back in through the sump pumps discharge hose but allow water to be pumped out so you can see the little arrow on the fitting that means water or effluent is supposed to travel this direction through the fitting and uh yeah and then down below oh yeah we got this little bolt this is just a 3 8 eye bolt with uh some nylock nuts there's two of them one on top and one on bottom and they're just sort of pinching the lid so they're sort of functioning like jam nuts. Those two nuts are just squishing the lid and securing this hook nice and secure. Then we got a hook, a little uh, <clears throat> stainless steel carabiner and a two foot length of chain so that we can chain this sump pump up and down as we, as we see fit. The sump pump is this ever built half horsepower from Home Depot. These things are $115, nice and burly. We got a nice stiff, burly discharge switch so the uh, automatic float will kick on and off as this thing fills up full of water and then we got a short piece of jumper hose going from this inch and a half discharge fitting reduced down to three quarter inch with the hose barb and just some old flexilla hose it's going to go up and connect to that bulkhead fitting right there so there's a little bit of slack in this hose so that this sump pump can be chained up and down inside the drum not much to it. Put this thing together in really less than an hour, or maybe two hours if we count the time it took to cut the holes. But yeah, all right, let's uh, finish up the final assembly here. 
So all we really got left to do is plumb in our discharge fitting, our sump pump discharge fitting. And now these bulkhead fittings, uh, they're actually, you screw them down lefty tighty righty loosey, so they're opposite. So we gotta pretend like we're tightening this down in order to get it to uh, screw down, get the fitting upside down here. Oops, sorry, yeah, lefty tighty righty loosey. Now on these bulkhead fittings, there's uh, on the underside, there's a rubber gasket. Uh, make sure, I guess I probably should show you that real quick. I've never done one of these before. So these uh, bulkhead fittings have a rubber gasket here. And this is what sort of makes them airtight, this little rubber gasket. So make sure this rubber gasket sealed up real good. Doesn't fall off or nothing. And just screwing these things down hand tight is good. You could put a pipe wrench on them or something, but you don't need to. Okay. Plumb in our back in and back out. Fittings. Now from here, uh, these are set up for two inch vacuum lines. Now on the, the shop vac is probably gonna have like two and a half inch, some kind of proprietary rigid shop vac vacuum hose but we'll just uh find a way to go and reduce that down or maybe we'll put our own fitting in the shop back so that it takes standard carpet cleaning vacuum hose just like two inch carpet hose which is really good you don't need to have like heavy duty vacuum pump truck hose it's just overkill lightweight plastic vacuum hose is what you want to go with and two inch is a good diameter to go with because it, uh, it allows a good mix of being able to move water and air for the size of the systems we're going to be using. That's the best option. Okay. And a 50 foot chunk of two inch vacuum hose is like $95 from John Don. Screw in our electrical cord strain relief fitting and then we're going to set the amount of cable excess cable we have under the lid for the uh, sump pumps ability to go up and down we're just going to give it a foot or two or slack so that if we want to we can just set this sump pump right down on the bottom of the drum if we don't have that much sediment we want to pump off as much water as possible so yeah we got about the right amount there we're going to screw down this strain release cap and cause that little crimp fitting to bite into that cord and hold it real good, real solidly. These little uh, strain relief electrical cord fittings you can get in Home Depot for a couple of bucks. They make plastic ones and metal ones. I originally got a metal one, but it uh, was half inch diameter and it wasn't narrow enough inside to seal up around the cord, so I had to grab this little plastic one I had laying around and came off a, a wastewater pump. Okay, so there's our power cord, wastewater pump out, and then we'll go ahead and just put our check valve on the wastewater pump out, just a garden hose fitting. You can screw on there. Yeah. Now all we gotta do is uh, hook up our little jumper hose to the sump pump and the lid. So that green hose has got to put get put up on that barbed fitting. So right here, uh, what you want to do is you want to have some kind of flexible hose. Don't get like braided water hose or something that's stiff, like Goodyear rubber water hose. You want to use something soft and flexible like this Flexilla stuff because you know, you're gonna have this little bit of slack going up to this fitting and it's if, if you have like stiff hose or hose that's gonna become rigid and brittle, it, when you have this thing chained up, it's gonna cause the sump pump to kind of kick over at an angle you don't want to. You want the sump pump to hang nice and straight. So we just got this little bit of chain. We got some extra chain for slack here. Stainless steel chain, just got a little two foot length of that from Home Depot. And uh, what we're gonna do, instead of using hose clamps, we're gonna use these little sort of permanent hose clamps, which you put on with a pair of pliers. And here's a little word to the wise for you. 
when you're putting on these hose clamps, you wanna use two of them and you wanna oppose the crimp. So have one crimp on one side, one, one crimp on the other, that eliminates leaks. But if we were to put regular old threaded, you know, hose clamps on here, you could screw on with the screwdriver, they're gonna get rusty and be a problem. So better just to do this. These little uh, clamps are gonna last a lot longer. And we don't want this thing coming off because we'll be on a job site if this hose pops off, then the sump pump's gonna be running, but water will not be being evacuated out of the drum and it'll cause a problem. The drum's gonna fill up. We'll have to take the thing apart, figure out how to pull 50 gallons of water out of that drum and then get that hose put back on. So we wanna avoid having that hose come off. So I'll just set this up right, real quick right here. And uh, get a little footage of this uh putting on this hose clamp here may have to uh lower the forklift down so i can get this in the shot my little tripod is not able to cant up at enough of an angle one second okay so we got the hose on and i got my clamps slid onto the hose and they're opposed 180 degrees so we got one crimp over here and one crimp on the other side and you just squeeze these things with a little pair of pliers you can buy these little clamp kits. Also with these clamps at Home Depot, they're just a slightly better option than adjustable hose clamps. Okay, that's it. Let's have a good close look under here. Ooh, we got some uh, got some electrical cord slack. We got some discharge hose slack. We got our chain and our hook. And on top, we got our cord coming out. And uh, what I did already was uh, now in order to get this cord through that fitting, you got to cut the end of the cord off and then re-splice them back together to get them through that little fitting. And then you, know, you use some like waterproof uh, butt connectors, close them up with some heat shrink and then cover all those three butt connectors with some heat shrink. And a little tip for you, if you want the heat shrink to seal up quickly, what you wanna do is you wanna put, you don't wanna cut all the three wires in the same place, the, the black, the white, and the green ground wire, otherwise known as L1, L2, and ground. What you wanna do is like cut one wire here, cut one wire there, and cut one wire there and then offset the butt connectors so that, because all three butt connectors, they'll be too wide to go through this heat shrink and we want to have a nice good seal on the cord. So if you just sort of offset your cuts and then splice in your butt connectors so they're not stacked on top of each other, but they're kind of offset, and then you'll just have a little, a little bit more of a cleaner install. Now, when we use this thing, when you're, uh, you know, sucking up water, We're gonna be, look, we're gonna have some problems with this thing we're gonna have to try to work out and these are gonna be flow issues. But what we're gonna be using is just standard two inch carpet cleaning vacuum hose. And that's not gonna be what's on the shop vac. For the shop vac, I was in there looking at uh, shop vacs in Home Depot yesterday and the, basically the top tier of power in these shop vacs is right about six, six and a half horsepower. So we'll put a vacuum gauge on this thing and see what kind of vacuum pressure we can generate. But they had this exact same one there, along with another one. There was two of these, right? It says uh, 6.5 peak horsepower. That's like the top power model. Now the two top power models they had available, they're each about a hundred and something dollars. Uh, one of them was 168 and this one was 125. They both have the same amount of power. Basically, they got the same electric motor in the top, but one of them is just like a normal shop vac, but this one just has a detachable blower. So you can take off the power unit and then sort of use it like a leaf blower. There's like a little thing you can take off and put on the edge. And so I just went with this one. Decided to go with this one because you just have that little bit of extra functionality. You can take off the top motor and use it like a leaf blower. If you gotta blow some pine needles off somebody's deck or something like that you got a shop back that can do one extra job for you. So that's why I went with this one. 
and I want to buy another one because I already had one sitting on the floor. So this is the shop vac we're going to go with for this system. They're $125. The other one that didn't have the detachable blower is like 50 bucks more. I don't know why for some reason, but they both are the top tier model of this six and a half horsepower. But the vacuum hose <coughs> is two and a half inch. And uh, I don't know, maybe that'll fit on there. The little stock vacuum hose that comes with this thing. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Goes right on there. Perfect. It's a little loose, but that, that'll be fine. So from there, we'll see how much vacuum hose we're going to run on this thing and be able to make it to work now or get it to work. Now with this thing, we want to have the shop vac probably as close to the drum as we can. So we're not going to have some crazy length of vacuum hose going from the shop vac to the drum. But what we do want to do is we want to have as much hose coming off the working end as we can get away with. So we'll do some tests. We'll use, uh, we may have to introduce a breather valve. I'm going to show you what one of these things are. We just sort of put these things together out of PVC fittings. But this is a way that if you have a vacuum hose that's like full of water and it just sort of bogs down, um, you can put something like this. This, this one just has cam lock fittings on it. You can buy this with parts from Home Depot, but this would just go in line in your vacuum hose. And then you have a little ball valve here you can crack open to just introduce a little bit of air into the system, adjusting it with this uh, butterfly valve here. So we may have to use one of these or something like this let a little bit of air in the line so that that vacuum motor doesn't have to work that hard. Or if it is just working hard, it'll bring bring the uh, the load in the vacuum line down to within a manageable limit that that shop back can actually handle. Because remember, this thing is gonna be the weak spot in this whole system. The sump pump is a half horsepower, horse, excuse me, a half horsepower sump pump, right? And uh, this thing is basically going to be way overpowered compared to what the shop vac component of the system is gonna be able to do. That's good because we don't want the thing that we can't see or that we can't get to, to be the bottleneck. We want whatever's hardest for us to get to. We wanna know that this thing is going to be working in a way where whatever this thing can throw at it, this thing can more than handle. And uh, this thing should be able to keep up with this shop vac, even with 200 feet of wastewater discharge hose hooked up to it. It should be able to pump water out faster than this shop vac will be able to take it in. That's what we want. We want the invisible part of the system or the, the part that's hard to get at to not be the bottleneck. So, and it was a good cost, a good cost point to go with. It's like $115, but it's a pretty, I mean, it's made in China probably, but you know, I was looking at these things and they had a bunch of different ones in there. They had a big three quarter horsepower one, but it was like $220. And I know from experience that a half horsepower sump is going to be able to handle this and probably two or three more vacuums added in. So yeah, that'll be the one we go with. But that's it guys. That's the whole system right there installed on a drum lid. Now this thing will allow you once we get the sort of the, the bugs worked out of it, we'll go play with it a little bit. I pretty much already actually know what the bugs in the system are going to be, but we're going to go through and work on that stuff together. But we'll play around with this thing, see what kind of performance we can get out of it. And uh, we'll put it in a few different situations. We'll let it suck a mixture of air and water. We'll deadhead the vacuum hose in a puddle and just see if it can actually pull straight out of a straight out of a puddle without any air in the line. And then if we have to introduce air in the line. But, you know, when you're picking up wash water, there's lots of ways you can go about it. So you might have different situations. You might have like just a storm drain out in the street, which is like an 18 by 24 inch square. And uh, you know, what do you, how are you gonna plug that up? There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can take the lid up, grab a couple of thick contractor grade trash bags, like, uh, like these ones right here. These are sort of super thick ones. You can lay those across the opening of the storm drain and then drop the cover on top of that and use the trash bags like sort of a waterproof barrier. Just put like two or three of them under there and then just stomp the lid down. That, that's one way you can seal that storm drain up and prevent any water from going into the basin. The other thing you can do 
is uh, you can take one of those trash bags and just fill it up full of water and it'll just be like a big square water balloon. You can just kind of roll up the edge, lay it with a two by four or a piece of metal pipe or something so that you have this big water balloon laying over the catch basin lid. Those work, we do that all the time. Like if you uh, forgot your impact gun and the, and the storm drain lid is bolted down with those big half inch hex bolts and you forgot your impact gun, you can't get the drain lid up because it's bolted down. You can just lay a trash bag over it Fill that trash bag up full of water, then just lay a brick, roll up the edge, lay a brick or something on it, and it'll hold the water in there. And those make excellent water dams. No water will get underneath that trash bag full of water and go into the catch basin. But sometimes you don't have nice, convenient points to capture water. Sometimes you have like a long, linear, like a trench drain or something like that along a fuel station pad or at the base of a garage ramp or... Uh, any place where they don't have like a single round or square drain hole. So here's a piece of equipment that we use for setting up long linear wash water containment systems. This is called a vacuum boom. These things are basically, they're these, uh, these chunks of uh, neoprene material with the sort of polycarbonate exoskeleton chunks of plastic that provide it with some rigidity. But these, what it is, you hook all these little sections. These are five foot long. You lay these things out, and this is just essentially a U-shaped piece of neoprene, right, with some sort of plastic skeletal stuff attached to it to give it some rigidity. But you hook a bunch of these together with these clips right here, joining two sections together or putting an end cap on, and you can do as many chunks as you want to make a long linear bear. It's about 40 feet of this stuff. And then you just pop this little cap off and plug your vacuum hose. Yeah, that one's stuck on there. There's one. Uh, you would just stick your vacuum hose in there and what'll happen is this whole thing will suck down and seal to the ground. And then every so often, there's a little hole where water can get sucked in. So there are sections without the vacuum ports, they're just like a straight seal. And then there's sections that have those little yellow marked holes where water can go in every so often. These things are pretty cool, but you have to have like a really smooth floor. And the other major drawback to a vacuum boom is just 40 feet of this stuff is like $5,000. So you're probably not gonna have no $5,000 just to spend on one piece of supporting tooling that you might use, right, every now and again. It's just, you know, that's that comes later. So, but what you can do as a workaround in the meantime is just get yourself some cheap lay flat hose. This is a way right here. This little, this is 50 feet of this shit or 25 feet. Costs about 30 bucks from Home Depot. This is just like flat, lay flat discharge hose. It's made out of PVC or something like that. It's kind of stiff right now, but once this stuff is in the sun, it gets really soft and pliable. Lay this stuff out, roll it out in a big long, big long line and just sort of clamp the end shut with a pair of vice grips or something like that and then fill it full of water. And then essentially what you have is a long, like 25 or 50, you can use as many of these as you want. You can hook them together with cam lock fittings, do whatever you want, wrap them around corners. And then you have like a long linear water balloon that just makes a nice watertight seal on the ground. These things actually work really good for creating long linear flexible wash water containment systems. It's 30 bucks, 25 feet. You can put this at the base of a driveway. And uh, once this stuff warms up in the sunlight and it's not so stiff um, and it's full of water, it just sort of sits on the ground like a water balloon and creates a really effective wash water containment berm. And then from there, you can use this stuff to guide the runoff to a puddle or a place that's convenient to suck it up. That's one way of going about picking up the water. Another way is to use a small version of a vacuum surface cleaner because so you're not going to be able to use those big ones like we have on the floor back there because that little shop back is not going to be enough to power negative air pressure around the entire circumference of that larger head so you can use a smaller one but these also are probably going to come later because just one of these little small ones is like four or five or six or seven hundred dollars i forget exactly what they are but mossmatic makes a nice 12 inch one this kind of goes on the end of a wand so, you know, this shop vac system we're using might be just powerful enough to power a 12-incher. 
right? So if you need to do immediate capture and you don't want any freely running wash water, you can use one of these things to clean and capture instantaneously. And if that doesn't work, there's a little tiny six incher right there. So for sure, our shop vac will be able to power this little six inch one. This is one we have, and you can convert these things to go on a wand, or you can just put a pistol grip on it if you don't if you want to hold it by hand. So a lot of guys use these for like graffiti removal. Just plug a pistol grip with a quick connect right on the end of this fitting here and then hold it in your hand and you got a little handle to hold on to it and you can use this to clean graffiti off of walls or do some surface cleaning but if you're going to use it on the ground put some wheels on it push it around and that little shop back will be enough to pull through this six inch diameter here these are three or four or five hundred dollars from Mossmatic. Yeah, they're a little overpriced but basically what you have here is some spinning arms, just like a regular surface cleaner, but then you have this extra piece of metal in here that creates a little gap around the edge. And so the vacuum is focused and the water gets sucked up in between the bristles and this skirt right here. So all this, this little gap right here, you look down in there, that's the wash water capture path. So every now and again, you gotta take these things apart and clean them out because you'll get boogers and pieces of string and stuff that kind of clog up this thin gap that follows the outside contour of this housing before it goes out in the vacuum hose fitting. That's it, guys. Well, uh, we actually uh, did the main part of this video uh, yesterday on Memorial Day, but of course I fucked the footage up, which is why I'm redoing it today. And uh, we were originally supposed to do this on Saturday, but we wound up having to go out on an emergency job Friday night. We were out till like 3.30 in the morning. There was a sewage spill for one of our customers. So we <laughs> wound up working and I didn't want to bug my employees for that. So uh, I just went out and did it with my partner, Jenny and uh, did a little Friday night, Memorial Day weekend, overtime job all night, made a little money, which is cool. But uh, that put the bricks, the kibosh on doing the, uh, the build on Saturday, which was the original plan. Cause we wound up sleeping until like noon on Saturday. And then we, of course we had to do some barbecuing and stuff, have some people over. <laughs> And the footage went sideways yesterday, so we're just redoing it today. But I should be able to get all this together and do all the pricing tonight for all the parts and uh, basically do the wrap-up video tonight. And then uh, at some point, maybe, uh, I'm not sure when we'll be able to do the little test on this thing. I'm pretty busy this week. We're starting a big three-day project tomorrow and uh, don't really have time to do it today. So I might have to wait till next weekend, but we'll get the, uh, the test video out soon. But this will be part two, the build and uh, give you guys something to think about until we do the test next weekend. All right, guys, have fun. See you soon. Go get them. All right, let's do a little test real quick. What I did was I just popped off the check valve and plumbed in a little vacuum gauge. And all we gotta do is just deadhead the vacuum and see what it can generate. It ain't gonna be much. get about 4.5 inches of mercury. Could be worse. That's pretty good. That's gonna move some water. I bet we'll be able to get away with 50 foot, maybe 100 with the breather valve. All right, guys.